Chris looks like the Lone Ranger without being around his neck. One, two. One, two. One, two. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour, bienvenue à tous, and bonjour. I'm absolutely delighted to be here with our premier, Doug Ford, the Minister of Colleges and Universities, Ross Romano, Regional Chair Emerson, Mayor Scarpitti, MPP Pang, Minister Calandra, Minister Lettre, PA Piccini, MPP Canapati, and as well some representatives from York University, our Board of Governors, our Chair Paul Saparis and members of York senior team, and many other community leaders who have supported York University's Markham Center campus along the way. Today, I am pleased to announce that York University will be proceeding with plans to build our Markham Center campus. Woo! Premier, we have a bold vision and a solid plan and we will have shovels in the ground in the coming days so that we can open the doors in 2023. And it would not be possible without the support of you and your government, York Region, Markham, and the entire York University community of faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends who have contributed to this project, many of whom are here today or will be joining virtually. York University's engagement in York Region has been steadily increasing over many years to keep pace with the incredible growth of the population and industry. We are a major partner in the IBM Innovation Space Markham Convergence Center and York's Innovation Hub Yspace supports budding entrepreneurs in Markham. We also introduced academic programming in Markham for the first time last fall with classes at the IBM Canada headquarters. This new state-of-the-art campus will enhance accessible and affordable post-secondary education for thousands of students who will be able to attend a high-quality research-intensive university right here in York Region, offering professionally relevant programs in high-demand areas. The campus will leverage existing infrastructure in Markham, from transportation to athletic facilities, making for more efficient operations and supporting local businesses. And we will strengthen our partnerships with government, the private and public sectors, to offer work-integrated learning opportunities for all students, and to collaborate on pressing societal issues, such as COVID-19, homelessness, and climate change, driving economic growth and building inclusive and resilient communities. On behalf of York University, I am grateful to have the support of the provincial, municipal and regional governments, the donors who share our vision for the future of higher education, the people in Markham who have welcomed us with open arms and the entire university community. And a special thank you to Elder Amy Descharlais, who visited the site in advance back in 2018 to do ceremony at the location in recognition of our presence on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas as a new credit, and of our ongoing commitment to supporting reconciliation. The milestone we celebrate today represents a very bright future for students, Markham, York Region, and the province. Thank you, Merci Miigwech.
And now, it is my great honour to introduce the Premier of Ontario, who has taken time out of his exceptionally busy week to be with us today. During one of the most challenging times we have ever seen in Ontario and around the world, we have seen our Premier out every day, often on the front lines, sharing important information and working tirelessly to ensure that all Ontarians stay as safe as possible amidst this global pandemic. Premier, thank you for all that you are doing to support Ontarians, and thank you for being here today with us to support this vitally important infrastructure project. Please join me in welcoming Premier Doug Ford. Thank you so much, Doctor. Well, th th thank you so much, Doctor, and uh, well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Lenton, for uh, the very kind words and kind introduction. I'm excited to be back in Markham today for another fantastic announcement. I'm joined by Minister of Colleges and Universities, Ross Romano, along with the Parliamentary Assistant for Colleges and Universities, MPP, Dave Pagini. Ross and Dave are doing a great job with this incredibly important file. Also here today is our wonderful Minister of Education, Stephen Lecce. I'm also joined by our excellent provincial representatives from Markham, MPP Billy Pang, MPP Logan Kenapathy, and Minister Paul Calandra. Billy, Paul, and Logan are working hard to serve the people of Markham, and today's announcement is proof that they're getting results. And I'm happy to be joined by our municipal partners, York Region Chair Wayne Emerson, and Markham Mayor Frank Scarpitti. Mayor, you and your team are doing a fantastic job here in Markham. What a beautiful city it is. I also want to recognize Markham CAO Andy Taylor. Now Andy is a true, true champion, my friends. The city of Markham has been a true partner. You guys are doing a great job and thank you for everything you're doing. My friends, I'm thrilled to be back in this beautiful city of Markham. This is an incredible city with amazing people, with amazing leadership. It's a city that is growing fast, and that's why our government is making historic investments for the people of Markham and York Region. We're making these investments to keep up with the growth and ensure a bright future for Markham and York Region. That's why we're going to build subways for the people of York Region. We are investing a historic $5.6 billion to build the Young North Subway Extension to serve the people of Markham and Richmond Hill with rapid underground transit. Boy, I'm clapping for that one. I'll never forget the day the mayor made me sign that uh, shovel too. I told him every time I sign something, it costs us hundreds of millions of dollars up here. But it's why, <laughs> it's why we're expanding two-way all-day go service on the Stouffville line. These are great numbers too. Growing from 1,500 trips a week to six thousand trips a week I, even when they had showed me those numbers i said are you sure they're right and they're that's right six thousand trips a week and it's also why we have shovels in the ground to widen 404 from 407 to major mac so people can get to work on time and get home sooner these investments will be critical to keep up with the incredible growth we're seeing in this region in fact by the year 2040 markham will be a place where the population of ages 18 to 22 will increase by 34%. Now folks, this is the highest growth rate anywhere in the province. And that's why today's announcement is so important. Today we're announcing the first ever university campus in York Region. This is truly historic and it's long overdue. My friends, I'm thrilled to be standing on the future site of the Markham Center campus of York University. This will be a place where we unlock the potential of our young people in York Region and beyond. I want to thank Dr. Lenton. Thank you so much for your, your leadership. It couldn't, we couldn't have done it with, without the doctor. Uh, York University was able to bring the community together to support this important project. They were raised working capital, fundraised, and secured donations. They worked with all levels of government, the private sector, and their community to get this historic project going. It's truly incredible. This is the first project started under our new framework 
for major post-secondary expansions. It is a win-win for everyone, and we are thrilled to see this project move forward. The construction of the campus alone will create over 2,000 jobs and generate over $350 million in immediate economic benefits. The, the Markham Center campus will give 4,200 students access to 20 world-class degree programs. Students here in York Region will be able to get a degree in high demand fields like technology, data science, commerce, and entrepreneurship. My friends, we are starting something today that will benefit the people of Markham and York Region for generations to come. Before I pass it over to Minister Romano, I just want to say, I know Markham and York Region are entering stage three today, along with six other regions across the province, and this is great news. And I know the people are expecting to hear an update on stage three reopening from us on Monday. But the health officials have asked for a little more time to analyze the numbers. And as I've always said, we can't rush this. We will only move forward based on the best medical advice from the Chief Medical Officer, Command Table, and our local public health units. We will have an update for you on Wednesday on Stage 3 and the status of the three other regions. And I'm hopeful that we'll have some good news to share on Wednesday for those regions waiting to enter Stage 3. I want to thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. I'll pass it over to Minister Romano now. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Premier, for that kind introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. I am so very proud and excited to be joining you today for this very special announcement of a new campus for York University in Markham. I want to begin by recognizing the work of my fellow colleagues in our caucus, MPPs Billy Pang, Logan Kanapathy, and Minister Paul Calandra, for their incredible advocacy on behalf of Markham and York Region to bring a university to their rapidly growing community. These three have been working around the clock and they have never wavered in their advocacy for this project. They have been fighting from the very start and I just, I can't stress enough to you all how much it is their tenacity that has made today possible. Thank you so much to our uh, Markham area MPPs. Absolutely, thank you. I also want to speak to you about another incredible member of our team who has made today possible. Our government's parliamentary assistant to the Ministry of Colleges and University, my good friend, David Piccini. <laughs> Approximately one year ago, I don't want to take your, your, your applause there, David, you'll get another opportunity. I asked David to take on this file for major capacity expansion, and he has been on it like a dog with a bone. He worked closely with institutions, municipal partners and provincial political representatives to develop a plan. And he very quickly recognized the need to develop the framework that brings us here today so that institutions and communities across our great province would know exactly what they would need to do to be able to make this type of experience possible as Markham and York were able to do. I want to extend an extremely very, very special thank you to our parliamentary assistant, David Piccini, for his practical and his thoughtful approach to getting this framework created. And I want to share with you all now the three fundamental pillars to our government's framework for major capacity expansion that was made possible with the great work of our parliamentary assistant, David Piccini. First of all, it's about community involvement. This is about ensuring that the community and all levels of government collaborate in the project in a way that leverages existing community supports and facilities, such as athletic facilities. The basic principle under this partner is about leveraging community partnerships. The second pillar is about meeting labor market needs. This is about ensuring that there is a market for the proposed school and ensures that the programs offered will provide future graduates of institutions with the skills that they will need to fill vacancies and future labor market needs of the community and the region. And the final pillar is the funding model. 
The funding model was created in recognition of the financial realities of our province, which at this time make it impossible for Ontario taxpayers to be able to fund the significant capital expenses that are required to build and equip a modern and high-tech university or college. As such, this pillar requires that any new major capacity expansion projects such as the York Markham campus we have announced here today will receive operating expenses only from the province at this time. This is why, with respect to the announcement here today, York and Markham, working together with other community partners, have found a way to independently raise all of the necessary capital costs to build and equip this campus in Markham with a to total capital and equipment valued at $275 million. I want to again thank our parliamentary assistant, David Pacini, for all of his hard work on the development of this framework and, and ensuring that our institutions and communities across our province have a clear understanding of the path forward to success and ensuring that Ontario taxpayers receive the value for money that they deserve while also ensuring that the people of our province can receive that the, the education that they need where they need it most. I also would be remiss if I did not offer a very special thank you to the president of York University, Dr. Rhonda Letton, who, Rhonda, after all of these last several months, I'm sure you're tired of talking to me in the frequent consultations we have over the phone, uh, but at Rhonda, you've been uh, an absolute champion um, in working on this proposal. I also want to provide special thank yous to Mayor Scarpiti and uh, Regional Chair uh, Emerson. Uh, thank you so much for all the great work on your parts to be able to make today a reality. I now want to pass it over to York Regional Chair Wayne Emerson to say a few words. Thank you. Well, thank you, Minister and uh, Premier. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we mark a significant milestone for the academic future of our communities. On behalf of York Region Council and our 1.2 million residents, a sincere thank you to you, Premier Ford, the Governor of Ontario, York University, and the City of Markham for joining with York Region to make this announcement. There is a shared vision for York Region and our partners. Together, we are strengthening opportunities for students and showcasing York Region as a destination of choice for higher learning. In order to support our economic growth, we need to connect students and researchers with our diversity and high-tech business community. The best way we do this is through direct investments in our people, education, and our economic industry. That is why, in 2015, York Region Council committed up to $25 million to help this campus become a reality. Today, I'm proud to reaffirm our financial commitment. This campus will provide York Region students with even more opportunities to study and thrive in the local community. Building a campus in the city of Markham is a great choice for York University. The campus will offer direct access to multiple, multiple transit services and amenities, including York Region Transit and Viva, Go Transit, the Markham YMCA, and the Pan Am Center. Our business sector will also benefit from the influx of students working in placements and internship. On behalf of York Region Council and the Region of Municipality of York, our thanks to all for making this happen. This is truly a great day for York Region and marks the next step of an exciting partnership to invest in our people, the economy, and the future. So once again, Premier, I really want to thank you for all your work and the, and the work you're doing on the COVID. And I have to say, the first two or three months with COVID, sir, there was, you were very, very concerned about what was happening. But the last couple of weeks, I've seen you smile, which is great, Premier. I'm really glad that you, I know you've had a lot of pressure, sir, but with your government, we thank will you. move mountains. But thank, thank you very you. much. Appreciate thank, you. thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Very kind. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, as the mayor of Markham, I'm pleased to uh, welcome everyone here. I want to say thank you very much, uh, Premier, for not only joining us here today, but your ongoing support. And as the Premier always says, and I'm going to quote you, you have been an absolute champion, and you truly have, and we thank you. I also want to say uh, thank you to Minister Romano, and I, Minister, 
You've had an enormous task of revamping and developing post-secondary education in the province and developing a new strategy. And it's great as part of that strategy that we're here to announce the first major university expansion. So thank you, Minister. And as indicated, I also want to say a special thank you to David Piccini, parliamentary assistant to the minister. While the minister was tasked with the overall strategy, I want to thank David for rolling up his sleeves to work out the details of this particular project. I thank you for some really incredible work. So thank you. Let's give him a hand. He's done a great job. We just are so incredibly proud and excited to be home to York Region's first public university. This is a momentous occasion, not only for the city of Markham, but for the GTA, York Region, and for the entire province of Ontario. It used to be said that York Region was the only jurisdiction with a population of more than a million people in all of North America that did not have a major university. Well, guess what? After today, that can't be said anymore. So thank you, Premier. We are celebrating, we're celebrating the incredible partnership between York University, the city of Markham, York Region, the province of Ontario, and I must say, the generosity of some private donors who are here today, and I thank them for their generosity. All partners remain steadfast in their commitment to see this project through. And it's fair to say that we all worked, we all worked to make this a reality. But make no mistake, we would not be here today if it wasn't for the determination, the perseverance, and the incredible commitment from President Rhonda Lenton. Thank you, President Lenton, for all your work. I'd also say thank you to our, our local MPPs, in particular, Minister Paul Calandra. Also, Billy Pang, Daisy Way, Logan Canapathy, and Gila Martil for their incredible support. I want to say thanks to the previous council and our current Markham Council, and they can raise their hands, they're here today. Thanks to council because it's their commitment. Let's give them a hand. Yeah, they're great work on behalf of everyone. It's because of their ongoing commitment that made it possible for the city of Markham to no donate the land for this university, which is valued at more than $50 million, an incredible, incredible contribution. And as you've heard, this campus will transform post-secondary education here in York Region and the GTA. Now is exactly the right time to build this campus. As was said by the Premier, the number of 18 to 22 year olds in York Region is projected to grow by 34% to the year 2041. That's the highest growth of that age group in the whole province. This is a growing need, a growing need in our community to access quality post-secondary education and to have that education close to home, ensuring accessible education to everyone. Ensuring high quality education is one of the most important things that we can do to ensure a bright and promising future. The York University Markham campus will support York Region's projected population growth, which again is one of the fastest growing areas in all of Ontario. It fits perfectly with the vision that we have here in Markham Centre building on our highly skilled, highly diverse workforce. Markham is a key player in Ontario's innovation corridor, and it's at the center of the second largest tech sector in all of Canada. The innovation that's happening right here in this community has far reaching global impact. This beautifully designed state of the art campus and it is beautifully designed. It's not gold premier, but almost. It's, uh, it's quite attractive. We'll sit right here in the center of this area, right next to the beautiful Markham Pan Am Center. And it is within a five minute walk to the Unionville GO station as the premier, an incredible, an incredible system that's being improved. 
The campus will offer students more than 20 degree programs. Su students will receive an experience unlike anything else. They'll receive the necessary education, the skills and the training, while also having access to workplace experience, working collaboratively with our information and technology companies. This is an investment in our future. In fact, it's the most powerful investment in our future. There's no greater return than investment than in education. It forms a solid foundation for the path forward. And with this, Markham, as a 21st century city, is ready for the future economy. This will strengthen our position as a hub for innovation while driving the future prosperity of the province. There's always been the strength of this proposal, but now it will be a driving force, uh, a much needed driving force, as we engage in our economic recovery. We cannot wait until the students from all across York Region, the, G the GTA and beyond, will be here when the doors open in 2023. It's been a long time coming, the moment that we've all been waiting for. And I couldn't be prouder to be standing here today with the Premier, with Minister Romano, with Rhonda Lenton and her team from York University, and our team from the City of Markham and York Region. Now, York. The Y in York stands for the youth. You will reach your full potential because of this university. The O in York stands for Ontario. This university positions Ontario well for the global economy. R is for recovery. This project has always been important to the future prosperity, but it's become critically important for the economic recovery. And K, uh, yeah, K, well, you're damn right. It's okay that it's right here in Markham and in York Region. I never was very good at those acrostic poems. But anyways, our shared commitment to this land pro landmark project ensures that university will be here in the Markham center area. It's moving from a vision to a reality. And now the road to higher education runs through Markham. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Ministers. Thanks to everyone who's made this possible. Thank you, Mayor Scarpetti and Chair Emerson for those inspiring words. Thank you for your leadership through these extraordinary times. As the MPP for Markham Unionville, I'm thrilled to hear that this important project is moving forward. I want to thank the Premier and Minister Romano for joining us here today to share this exciting news. Dr. Lenton, thank you for your spearheading this community building project that will help provide a world-class education to our young people and top-notch talent for local businesses. As the Premier always says, we have the brightest and smartest mind anywhere in the world, here in Ontario. In addition to that, we also have the most thoughtful and caring young people here in our province. I'm so proud of the York University students and staff who has gone above and beyond this past few months whether it was collecting PPE donations for health care workers and homeless shelters, or providing grants for COVID-19 research projects. They have shown the true Ontario spirit. And today, we are taking another step forward to build a better future for our young people and help prepare them for the jobs of the future. We will ensure our students in York Region have access to world-class learning closer at home set them up for living success. I want to thank everyone for coming here today, and I look forward to work with Premier Ford, Minister Romano, to see this project through to the finish line. Thank you. We're gonna to go to the phone line for questions. Just a reminder that it is one question, one question and one follow-up. Thank you. 
Your first question comes from Afua Ba with 105.9 The Region. Please go ahead. Hi, how are you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm well. I hope you're well, too. Thank you so much for taking my question. Um, First question is regarding uh, the rising number of cases amongst young people. Uh, So we've seen the COVID numbers amongst young people have been steadily rising, Premier. At what point do you maybe have to say to yourself that you have to put in some sort of measures in place to help curb these large gatherings that we continuously see? We've seen many incidents uh, happening in bars, beaches, uh, bylaw officers, clearly not enough, and I'm sure municipalities are trying their best, but uh, it looks like there is some sort of additional help that they need from the province. I believe maybe if you and also uh, Mark and Mayor Frank Scarpetti can also chime in on this answer. Yeah, well, it's, it's disturbing. We're, we're seeing the numbers uh, fluctuate. We were at 103 yesterday. We're up to about 190 uh, today, and it's, it's always concerning, but People and and the young people, we have the brightest young people anywhere in the world. I always uh, say that, but there's a small percentage, guys. You you just, I'm telling you, you you just can't go to these parties. It's, uh, you're going to go home. It's it's not little Johnny I'm worried about. It's little Johnny's grandparents I'm worried about. They go see grandma, grandpa, or mom and dad. That's, you know, that's concerning. So the vast majority of the young people are cooperating. They're following procedures and guidelines and you get the odd small group but uh you know the party out in ottawa i heard about uh one one young guy had it and invited everyone and maybe he got tested he didn't know he had it at the time but still guys just don't go to the party what more can i say i you know be responsible and and to put a guidelines across the province i always say you know timmins isn't toronto manitoulin isn't markham uh, kenora isn't kitchener We have such a vast area, and I want to emphasize this. I think I say at every press conference, every local chief medical officer has the powers to put in protocols. And if they want to put protocols into large urban areas, by all means, I I welcome it. I encourage it. So if you have a large uh, urban center and you're seeing issues, then put in the protocols. Make make sure that uh, we address the issues of the bars. But I can't, I can't compare uh, Timmins to, to large urban areas. I can't compare Kenora when we, we don't see uh, a lot of uh, COVID cases there. So I encourage the local chief medical officers uh, to use their powers uh, to make the community safer. Uh, and uh, I'll, you know something, I'm going to pass this to Mayor Scarpetti. We've had this conversation uh, many, many times. But Mayor, do you want to say a few words? Well, thank you, Premier. And, and first of all, I, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, I echo the comments made earlier. Premier, you and your team have just done an amazing job uh, right from the beginning of this uh, pandemic. And, and not to take anything away from any previous Premier, but I've worked with a lot of Premiers in my day. And I just want to say that this Premier is the most accessible Premier we've ever had. And I, and I know that that view is shared by many mayors right across the province of Ontario. And so I I think the Premier has said it well. Uh, He's got other communities that he has to consider, the rural areas of Ontario, and in areas where we have the large urban municipalities, all of us have to be doing what we can do to take the proper measures. And I would just say that I hope the medical officers of health will use their power when they see the need to do it. And certainly I'd be looking for that level of protection and I know that our businesses and our community would be asking the same. Follow up. Well, first Thank of all, you. I'm and uh, my follow up question, I know that uh, now York Region has now entered into stage three today, but a lot of businesses, uh, a lot of large businesses not able to uh, open up as of yet. One example is Cineplex. I know that they have been asking for a little bit of flexibility regarding some of the restrictions in terms of gatherings. Is there any details as to uh, if that would be allowed, if you would be allowing uh, maybe 50 people to be entering in an auditorium at a time instead of 50 people in the building at a time, Premier? So I've been in communications with the CEO of Cineplex. Our team's been in, in communications and I I understand what he's saying. So you have some of these large, large uh, cinemas. They have 13 theaters in them. And 50 people are allowed within the whole building. I don't know. What do we do? Put two or three people in each cinema? It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it's not feasible to open up if you have 50 people. But 
Again, I have to rely on the chief medical officer. Cineplex has put a great plan together. It's on the table. We've talked about it numerous times. And uh, I'm just going to follow the health of the chief medical, the advice of the chief medical officer and uh, the health team. And if they, they feel that we, we just aren't ready yet, then we aren't ready. But hopefully, as the numbers decline, and hopefully they're going to continue to decline outside of the couple of bleeps we've seen last few days, then I, I think they'd be more flexible in, in having uh, people uh, go into different different theaters. But I, I understand some of the concerns, or even even big banquet halls. Say there's a banquet hall, 50, 100,000 square feet. It's, it's hard to justify opening when, you, when you're allowed 50 people uh, there. So if we can just hang in there a little bit longer, then hopefully we can, we can increase those numbers. Next question. Your next question comes from Haley Cooper with News Talk 1010. Please go ahead. Hi, Haley. Thank you. Hi, Premier. The Toronto Catholic District School Board voted in favor of a plan that would see children return to full-time classes in September, but without smaller class sizes. So will your government approve this, or is it too risky, and therefore it has to be denied? Well, I know this is unusual. The minister is not beside me, but he's standing over there. I'd like to call the minister up here for, for a second. He's the expert. But our goal, to answer your question, our goal, my goal, and people's goal, and people want certainty. They want to know that they can come into work and their kids are going to be uh, somewhere safe uh, for five days a week. And that, that's our ultimate goal. But, Minister, I'll pass it over to you. Uh, well, thank you very much, Premier. Uh, the commitment we've made is to ensure that we're prepared for three circumstances, and that includes a conventional delivery day-to-day uh, back in school five days a week, likewise an online option should we need to revert to uh, that, and, like, and also an adapted model, which includes a blended uh, 15. We're asking boards to present their plans by the 4th of August. At that point, we're going to review them, supported by a command table of some of the best pediatric and medical minds in the country we've assembled to review them, to ensure that it abides by and follows the advice of the chief medical officer. So I don't want to get ahead of that process other than to commit that we're going to be doing a thorough review to ensure they are safe, to ensure that students uh, can get back to class in September at a conventional model. Uh, and the focus for the next few days is to finalize that plan, working very closely with the chief medical officer of health, the COVID-19 command table, to enable schools, students, and likewise our educators to come back to class September with the right investments, the right tools, and likewise the resources to ensure it's safe. Follow-up? Follow Thank you, and my follow-up is for the Premier. There are growing complaints about something that's happening in Barrie and Aurelia, where they've jacked up pricing for non-residents to park and use boat launches. So in Barrie, non-residents uh, are paying $10 an hour, up to a daily maximum of 50 just to park by the lakefront. Now, the previous hourly rate was $3 an hour. The daily maximum was 20 And in Aurelia, uh, from Thursday to Sunday until mid-September. Out-of-town visitors are having to pay $50 to park in municipal lots, and they also have to pay $50 to use the city's boat launches, whereas residents can launch their boats for free. They can also park their vehicles for free. So is this not considered price gouging of non-residents, which is something you have spoken out against frequently throughout this entire pandemic? So. Is it price gouging, and will you be asking that these prices be returned to pre-COVID levels? I'd say it's price gouging. When you're charging $3 and all of a sudden it jumps up to 50 that's that's absolute price gouging. Or if it goes from 10 uh, and you're doubling it to 20 But uh, for parking, $50 up in Barrie? So I'll, I'll talk to the Attorney General, Doug Downey. He represents that area, Jill Dunlop in, in Aurelia, and uh, we'll jump on that. Do you know what I can't stand? I can't stand when companies or governments take advantage of people in a crisis and they start gouging these people. People can barely put food on their tables. They can barely pay their rent, barely pay their mortgage. People are holding on by their fingertips and says so some municipal government wants to gouge you. It's, 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 it's disgusting in my opinion. So we'll, we'll get the attorney general to look into that and find out what's going up, on up there. But uh, be fair to everyone. You know, people are coming up there, maybe you go for uh, lunch or dinner and spend their money in local stores and you want to gouge them at $50 a shot and parking up in Barrie? you got to be kidding me. That's absolutely ridiculous. Next question. 
Your next question comes from Sean Jeffords with the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, Sean. Good afternoon, Premier. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions today about Windsor Essex. Uh, we've learned this morning that um, the region has surpassed uh, Toronto and Peel and become the uh, the highest region in terms of um, case counts or sorry um, cases per 100,000 people case rates in the province. The chief or the medical officer of health down there has expressed a lot of concern about that. This is very worrying. Is it time to consider uh, mandatory testing for all agri-food workers, farm workers in that region? I know you've resisted it in the past. You've said it can't be done. Why can't it be done? And isn't it becoming increasingly clear that that is going to have to be part of the solution? Well, that's a phenomenal question. It's ironic. You must have been listening to me this morning. I called our, our team and asked them to get a constitutional lawyer to find out if we can start uh, testing people. If someone comes into our country and, and, and we welcome, well, not right this second, but we welcome the folks and be it migrant workers or, or anyone else, that's a privilege when you cross the border into someone's country. And I think we're at the point now, and I try to, I try to work, 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 work until you can't work any longer with, with the folks. And uh, I, I would like to look into mandatory testing. It doesn't hurt anyone. You come into the country, you self-isolate for two weeks, you get tested, and it makes everyone feel more comfortable because we can't keep going this way. And I had a, a great conversation with Mayor McDonald of Leamington last night, and we had the same discussion of what you just said. Uh, but we have to check the Constitution. I got to make sure I go through the uh, lawyers. I have to make sure I call the federal government. Uh, but w what's the problem to get a quick test? I've been tested a couple of times. I'm sure everyone around here has been tested. And you're coming into our country, you're going to collect a paycheck you're giving a great service, and I appreciate the migrant workers. I really do. We're protecting them. If for any reason they're sick, they're going to get paid. If they were here last year, they're going to get served. We're going to make sure we take care of them. We're going to feed them. We're going to put them in hotels at our cost. So the least thing you can do is cooperate and get a test because it holds up all of Essex and Windsor, and it's just not fair to the people of Essex and Windsor. So, you know, if you can't, if you're, I'm, I'm up here last few weeks begging and pleading to get tested and some are getting tested but there's a lot of people still not getting tested just refusing to get tested so that's what burns me up and and we'll look into mandatory testing especially for this second wave of migrant workers coming in here i think there's another 3000 coming in but i have to i'm not a constitutional expert and i'm going to check with the the legal team on this and if that's the case then we'll put an order forward that they should be tested follow up Premier, also on, on Windsor-Essex, you've been asked a number of times about the province possibly taking um, charge of the entire uh, COVID response on farms in the region. You haven't answered very clearly. Um, the, the, the request, as I understand it, is an official formal request, um, which is akin to a state of disaster being declared specifically yeah. in the region and um, the political leaders in the region, as I understand it, feel like it's been ignored. Um, why is that the case and why is the province not acting on this or not even responding to it? Well, first, first of all, they don't believe it's ignored. I talked to Mayor McDonald, talked to Mayor Santos. They understand we have everyone and their brother down there right now. We have special, I call it kind of the SWAT team of medical professionals from Sunnybrook that are in there right now, highly qualified people. We have provincial inspectors down there. We have municipal inspectors. We have Ontario Health, which is running the whole show. Matt Anderson is down there, and he's appointed uh, someone that uh, is reaching out to both mayors, having good conversation with them on a, on a daily basis. Uh, we, we have everyone down there focusing on getting this problem solved and getting people tested. Uh, we have public health down there as well, uh, local public health. We have Ontario Public Health. We, we have everyone and their brother down there right now um, trying to get this uh, under under hand here. So uh, everyone's working hard and we'll, we'll, we'll get through this. Uh, but I would like to get everyone tested mandatorily. Last question. Your final question comes from Jacob Barker with CBC Windsor. Please go. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Premier. Uh, I'm also calling from Windsor, and I did want to ask you about uh, the fact that we do have the highest rate of infection currently in the province. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we saw 53 new cases today. Um, do you think that you uh, may have moved too fast moving the region into stage two, and would you consider moving it back uh, into stage one? No, I, didn't, I don't think we moved too, qu too quickly because we have to separate the, the farms and the migrant workers versus the whole population. When we moved into another stage, I think Windsor was at, what, three cases? And you can't hold up a, a city like Windsor and a region like Essex because one area is infected. We, we have to isolate that, that one group and make sure that we support them, get them proper medical help. And it's a big farming community. It's, it's massive. I, I, I want to qualify. I love the farmers. They know I love them. I'll do anything for them. Um, and, I, and I support the migrant workers. I support the people. But we have to get everyone tested until we can trace, uh, trace where it came from and what other groups and so on and so forth. We have a large Mennonite population that just went into the farms to help out. And uh, there's a group of Mennonites that also uh, have been infected. So if, if everyone could just go get tested, like we, we can solve the problem and, and you know, track where it's coming from and isolate the, the groups and support them. When I say isolate, I don't mean, you know, throw them away and, and not worry about them. We want to give them proper health care. We want to give them funding. We want to make sure they're secure and, and fed and hoteled. And we're, we're pulling out all the stops. So I just need the cooperation of the folks that if you have, uh, you know, runny nose, if you're feeling sick, please, please go get tested. It's absolutely critical. Follow up. Yeah, I did also want uh, to ask you about uh, what we heard yesterday from Ontario Health about the fact that they actually put a, a pause on farm testing uh, because of confusion and uh, a lack of communication with the employers. Um, and up to now, we've only seen uh, 19 out of 170 farms that have had on-site testing. So um, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, a mandatory testing, but what, what in this climate are you, are you doing to specifically make sure that uh, these workers are getting tested? Well, we're in full communication with OMAFRA. We have the Minister of Agriculture on it. Guys, I'm just going to cut to the chase here. If you have migrant workers, get them tested. Bottom line, full stop, that's it. We can't keep playing this, uh, you know, cat and mouse game. We're chasing, we're chasing, we're chasing. It's common sense. Get the people tested. I, I, I just can't stress it anymore. It's, it's frustrating when I beg and I plead up here to get them tested. And it's very simple. We will go to your farm. We will help you. We will support you. We will bend over backwards to do whatever it takes to get these people tested. And I, I just can't force them right now, but we're gonna look in to seeing if we can ask the people, if you're visiting Ontario and you're working here in Ontario and we're giving you the privilege of working and we're paying you uh, to work and we're helping you, we're supporting you, giving you shelter and food and hotels and so on and so forth, get a test. What more can I say, get a test. And sorry for being frustrated, but it's like banging your head up against a brick wall begging and asking for it, and they're just ignoring it. Because, you know, next time around, we'll, we'll take a different approach. But I just want to thank everyone. Ontario's still doing a great job. So thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a very safe weekend. Thank you.